Hey guys, have you ever wondered which Wu jumps higher, the Wu 2 or the Wu 3? We're about to find out. Let's do it. Does this look like a 7.2 meter jump to you? Clearly it's not, but according to Wu 3, this was my highest jump of the session. All right, so you may think that's just one jump, doesn't really prove anything, and I agree. So that's why we compared both Wu's over several sessions. We had two sessions in choppy water with light wind gusting up to 15 knots. And then we had flat water sessions using both a twin tip and a foil board with similar wind. And finally, we taped a big air session with wind over 20 knots. In sum, we got a sample size of 200 jumps for comparison. And we got all of them, every single jump, on video. The result was clear. On average, the Wu 3 measures jumps 8% higher than the Wu 2. During our testing, we tried to account for variables as best we could. We made sure we had the latest firmware, we flipped the positions of both Wu's on the board, we used different boards, and different riders. In every case, the Wu 3 jumped higher. The only caveat is that on a foil board, the Wu 3 discrepancy with the Wu 2 was lower compared to twin tips, with the Wu 3 jumps being on average 5.8% higher than the Wu 2, but that could be due to the low sample size of just 24 jumps. One of the biggest benefits of the Wu, at least in our opinion, is the social aspect of it. You get together with your community of kite friends, you have a great session, you compare your jumps. At least that's how we see it. Unfortunately, with the introduction of the Wu 3, it seems like the Wu game is now rigged in favor of Wu 3 users. So is Wu Sports, the company, doing this on purpose so that users have to upgrade to the latest Wu? Or is there actually a fundamental hardware difference between the two of these? It would be nice if Woo just fixed this issue with a firmware update, because otherwise it kind of seems unfair to the early adopters. So originally we were planning on doing this video on how the Woo 3 jumps higher than the Woo 2, but we found out some very interesting information about the accuracy of the Woo that we figured we should probably share with you. First, I'm going to get a little bit technical so you know exactly what we did when putting our woos to the test. We attached both woos to my board and started the session at the exact same time on both. On top of that, we recorded the moment when we turned both woos on so we could synchronize the data with the video footage of each jump. For this, we used a simple time calculator. Both the woo 2 and the woo 3 were incredibly good at detecting jumps. The timestamps from both Wu's are pretty much dead on with video footage that we have recorded. So good job on that front, Wu. Just in case you were wondering, during the choppy conditions, Wu did generate about a dozen one meter background jumps that we did remove for analysis. Now, just because Wu's are good at detecting jumps doesn't mean that they never miss any jumps. During our tests, the Wu 2 missed nine jumps and the Wu 3 missed 10 jumps out of 201 total jumps that we got on film. This means that both Woos captured about 95% of the total jumps and only missed 5%. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty good. Here's an example of a jump missed by the Woo 3. And here's a few examples of jumps that were missed by both Woos. About one third of all the jumps that were missed by Woos involved rotations, back rolls, double back rolls, etc. We also discovered that Woo missed twice as many jumps on a foil board compared to a twin tip and the percentage of missed jumps rose from 5% to 11%. Now missing jumps is one thing, but creating fictional jumps, that's a whole other story. Remember that shady 7.2 meter jump we showed you at the very beginning of this video? If you look at the timestamps, the Wu 2 shows that there was a jump at the 25 minute and 39 second mark, which matches exactly with the video footage we have. However, the Wu 3 recorded a 7.2 meter jump at 25 minutes and 36 seconds, which is a whole three seconds earlier. And since we have the video, we know that the jump occurred at exactly 25 minutes and 39 seconds. This means that Wu 3 mismeasured the jump and that my highest jump of the session at 7.2 meters never even happened. According to Wu 2, my highest jump of the session was 6.3 meters. But now I was wondering, did this jump even happen? Was it 6.3 meters or was it just a fluke? We decided to check it out. Let's watch the next two jumps, and I want you to decide which jump is 6.3 meters high. Honestly, to me, both jumps look about the same height. Maybe the one on the left is a tiny bit higher, but look at the Wu readings. According to Wu, these jumps have a difference of two meters. I don't know about you, but that doesn't look quite right, does it? For reference, I'm five foot seven or 1.7 meters. If you look at the screenshots, I've jumped about three times the height of my bent body position. 
Let's be generous and assume each picture of me is 1.7 meters. So if you multiply that by three, you'll get 5.1 meters. Now onto the next jump. We know that the board length is 133 centimeters, but it appears to be slightly angled. So let's say it's 1.3 meters, which we would multiply by 4.5 since the woo is located in the middle of the board. We get a rough height of 5.8 meters. So what do we get out of this? Two things. First is that the jump reported by the Wu 2 of 6.3 meters was not in fact my highest jump of the session, as we could see from our rough calculations with the jump on the left. Secondly, we learned that any jump can be over or underestimated. Just like in the example we showed you, two jumps of about the same height can get completely different readings. That being said, I think most kiters who use a woo or any kind of measurement device realize that it is just an estimate of height and it's not exact. It is funny though, because we do all tend to focus on the highest jump, which has the highest probability of being overestimated within the error range. With this in mind, we were curious, by just how much could a jump be overestimated? We recorded a second session in its entirety and we got another 40 jumps on camera. When I finished the session, I checked my Wu 3 and it turns out my highest jump was 8.6 meters, which I was pretty stoked about. Then I got home, I watched the video footage, and I wasn't so stoked anymore. No way was this an 8.6 meter jump or even a six meter jump. At best, I would say this is probably about five meters. In other words, it appears that the Wu 3 overestimated this by 72%. Wu 2 wasn't much better, having overestimated this jump about 30%. Picking the highest jump can be tricky business, as you're about to find out. During the same session, the Wu 2 picked this jump as the highest. Here it is. Apparently this jump was 7.4 meters high. But wait, there's another jump from the same session. So here's what we have. Wu 3 is telling us that the middle jump was the highest of the session at 8.6 meters. Wu 2 is telling us that the jump on the right was the highest at 7.4 meters. And then we have the jump on the left which we picked out from the videos as the highest jump contender. Both Wu's measured it at six meters. I don't know, maybe throwing the board over my body and the right jump played an effect in inflating the reading, which is honestly why I even do that, to get a higher jump reading. So you be the judge. Of these three, which one is the highest? You let us know in the comments below. At this point, guys, I think the whole concept of picking the highest jump based on our current technology is flawed. It's just not working. The error range is too big and it's basically a lottery. The way I see it is this. The Wu can under or overestimate any given jump by a few meters. If your session involves consistently high jumps around a few meters apart, it is entirely possible that a lower jump can be overestimated and a higher one can be underestimated and that the report you get does not really reflect reality. This is probably why you hear kiters say things on the beach like, I definitely jumped higher than that. Or you thought to yourself, I definitely didn't jump that high. <laughs> to sum it up, we have found that the Wu is not consistently good at reporting jumps of the same height. What about relative consistency? So far we've been focusing on the highest jumps, but these are the outliers or the jumps that are most prone to error. But who cares if a jump is overestimated or underestimated by a meter or two? What I wanna know is a low jump always a low jump and is a high jump always a high jump? Let's find out. The following is a sample of jumps in increasing height. Let's take a look.
There were definitely some questionable jumps in that lineup, but I would say that both Wu's did a good job at detecting relative height. But that's about as good as it gets. During the third Wu test session, we attempted to measure as objectively as possible the accuracy of the Wu measurements. We figured if we had a camera at a five meter height and I jumped in front of it, then the Wu reading should be about five meters. So we attached a five meter string to the drone so that we would know the drone is actually at the desired height. Unfortunately, the battery on the drone did not last very long and we only got a couple of jumps. Here's a three meter jump from the ground and here's the same jump from the drone. Here's the five meter jump from the ground and here it is from the drone. It does appear that I've reached the height of the drone. Naturally, the Wu-3 rated this jump at 6.1 meters. As we only recorded a handful of jumps from the drone, we can't make any conclusions, but it appears that this could be a valid way to test the accuracy of Wu devices. At this point though, I'm not even sure it's worth the effort given the videos we got from ground level. In conclusion, it appears that the highest jumps are often outliers. Based on our analysis in our sessions, it seems as though the highest jumps were actually just failures of the algorithm. Kind of sucks to hear, but I guess that's just is what it is. It is funny though, because the Wu does a really good job of detecting the majority of the jumps, as well as estimating the majority of the jumps. However, we're so obsessed with the highest jump, which is most likely an outlier. Doesn't really help though that the app highlights this particular jump for us. Maybe Wu should just ditch the highest jump tab altogether and instead focus on the average jump height as this seems to be more representative of reality. But it would also be kind of boring. But going off of your average jump height would have its own set of problems. Let's say you ride at a choppy spot. You're gonna get a bunch of little jumps just by going over the waves and this is gonna skew your average height. While it's addictive and fun to compare with your friends on the beach, these guys aren't really all that accurate. And if we knew then what we know now, we probably wouldn't have bought either of them. They weren't exactly cheap either. Another criticism that I have for the Wu, and maybe you can relate to this, is that it really slowed down my progression of learning new tricks. All summer long, I was totally obsessed with getting big air. And I did, or at least I thought I did. Finally, having confirmed that the Wu 3 does in fact jump 8% higher than the Wu 2, it really just feels like an unfair game. Given the error range that we saw in our analysis, we don't believe that the Wu 3 reporting higher jumps than the Wu 2 is due to improved accuracy. In comparison to the video footage, it actually seemed as though the Wu 2 was much closer to reality. All right guys, before we wrap up this video, we have one important question we need to ask you. Given all that we've discovered in our analysis of the Wu 2 and the Wu 3, should we keep them or should we sell them? What do you think? Let us know what we should do with our woos in the comments below. Also, let us know if you like this style of video. It was a lot of fun for us to create and we wanna keep creating things that you enjoy watching. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, leave a comment below and subscribe for more videos like this coming soon. We'll see you soon. Bye.